Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I, first of all, I understand it's 11:30, and I'm standing between you and lunch. So let me just uh, <laughs> let me just acknowledge that right away. Um, we'll probably end around 12:45, I would imagine. Uh, but please don't try to leave early. This is the Football Hall of Fame. I will tackle you. Uh, I am a grandfather, but I still will. And I was an over uh, receiver, not a defensive player, but I'll still, I'll still try to tackle you. Uh, I know I look like a linebacker now. You don't have to mention me. But, uh, but I was a wide receiver, I promise you. But uh, thanks for being here. I just have to give you a few caveats. Also, I'm working on my doctorate right now. So, um, you know, I might uh, get a little bit too much with the references and stuff like that. If the eyes start rolling back a little bit, I'll try to bring it back, okay? And then also, I'm an, an adjunct uh, teacher as well. So, that being said, it's going to be interactive. So, it won't be a lot of just listening to me talk, uh, because nobody wants that, right? Okay. So, also, I work for Montgomery County. Who knows where Montgomery, everybody know where Montgomery County is? Dayton. Dayton, very good, okay, all right. And so I'm the uh, fatherhood director for Montgomery County. Who knew Montgomery County had a fatherhood director? Okay, all right, that's good, all right. Very few of us in the state, what we try to do is connect fathers and families and give them a lot of information. But what is equally as important to my job is to try to talk to agencies and make sure that they understand how important fatherhood is, right? Okay, so what this is gonna be about is parenting time. So parenting time slash visitation. I don't really like the term visitation. Anybody know why? Yeah, I mean, if you're a parent, most, most times when individuals are living in a separate household, they're not visiting. They're just being, they're just in the other separate household. I mean, my kids, you know, I got divorced. You know, were in my house. They weren't visiting. They were, right. they, were, they, were the same, they were treated the same way in my house as when they were in their mama's house. That's right. So I, I, I don't think you, people refer to kids when they're in the mother's house as visiting. That's right. So you're visiting, you go visit your aunt, right? So you're not really, your kids are not really visiting. Okay, so they, all, they also tell me to talk about my background just a little bit too. So again, you know where Montgomery County is. What about Green? Senior, okay. senior? Oh, yeah. Senior? Oh, absolutely. Senior? Yeah. All right. Any, 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 any senior fans in here? Any of them. Okay, all right. So that's where I'm from. I'm from Xenia. Uh, been in Montgomery County for over 30 years. Now, I, I grew up, and again, it's very important that you always have to talk about the lens of who is in the room and who's talking to you. So it doesn't matter what the topic is. You need to know where I'm coming from as a person before you can really receive what I'm saying and understand what I'm, where I'm coming from with, with my points of view. So I grew up in a two-parent household. My parents have been married for 55 years. And, you know, again, we, uh, who knows the ACEs test? Tell us, what's, what's the ACEs test? Adverse childhood experiences. Okay, adverse childhood experiences test. Give me, how's it work? Who, who else put their hand up? ACEs? Ten questions. Huh? Yeah. Somebody experienced a divorce. Somebody talked to you. There's a harsh language. Right. At all. Suicide. Is that so the higher you score, what? The more you're at risk. The worse your childhood was. Right. You could say. Right. Okay. All right. I'm a zero aces guy. All right. So the reason I'm telling you that is because some of the things that we deal with in the system, there are a lot of people that are not zero aces people. There are people that are nine aces people. And so you have to craft the way that you try to deal with our folks based on that. And parenting time specifically really comes into play with those type of things. I didn't know, I've been in this business for 22 years. I didn't know anything about parenting time. There was nobody in my family that had really been divorced. I think my uncle. But um, I didn't really know anything about this whole, whole situation. So you have to learn and understand, and again, the importance of parenting time. We're going to talk a little bit about the importance of parenting time, then we're going to talk about 
some of the <coughs> barriers to parenting time, then I'm gonna give you some solutions. That sound all right? Mm -hmm. All right, what else? Did I miss anything? That's it. Okay, so we, we always start with, and I don't have a slide for this, but I do want other presentations, is that I always, we always tell our guys that your presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E, -E, not your presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S, -E mm -hmm. that, that make the difference. I told you uh, my parents had been married 55 years. My dad was a maintenance guy for Central State. I stand here till this time tomorrow telling you how great my dad was, is, whatever, okay? So, but again, it doesn't have anything to do with the money. And so, obviously, I was a, actually, I guess I should tell you, I was a 10-year ten, ten child support supervisor uh, prior to doing this. I will answer your personal child support questions afterwards. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, you know about that, what's going on with your, with your issues. But, um, and so, you know, again, the child support, that leads me right to my, to my main point. You understand that in Ohio, child support and parenting time are separate on children born out of wedlock. Does everyone understand? Yep. So if I have a, if I have a child out of wedlock, okay, um, that would be, amazing in a lot of ways. <laughs> I'm married, number one. Number two, I'd be suing Dr. Abramowitz. But, uh, but uh, the, uh, if I have a child out of wedlock, then I have no rights to see that child. Okay? None. None. So I can go to court and get them, right? but I do not automatically have rights to see the child. So if I start paying $20,000 a month, mom can say, thanks for your $20,000. All right, we'll see you when we see you, or not at all, <coughs> okay? So that's one of the main things you need to educate your clients about right away, because Maybe it's the jaded guy that's been in the system for 22 years, but for some reason, these people, what do they say? Bless their hearts, right? <laughs> these people believe that everything's gonna work out. And they're gonna, we're gonna have a good, we're gonna have a good uh, agreement, and she's gonna let me see the kids, and everything's gonna be awesome. Okay, go ahead. And the fact of the matter, logically speaking, <laughs> If, with that. <laughs> if, logically speaking, if you have a child together and you're paying child support, why would one think, logically, they would not have the opportunity to see their child? Right. So what, he's go, what, what we're talking about is something that's probably illogical that's right. <laughs> from the jump. So I, not only where I said I said, a lot of people that don't understand it are thinking logically. That's They're right. thinking like how they, th they think things should be where they're not. Well said. And that's why I say watch out with that when you said logically. <laughs> I said that's one of my favorite sayings when people are like, well, you would think, yeah, well, don't be using logic. Okay? <laughs> We're bringing logic into, into the system. You're going to get all messed up. Okay, so this is a study right here that was done. They studied 300, 393 families. It's what's called a longitudinal study. Anybody know what that means? Yeah, it was done over time. So they studied the families when the children were in seventh grade, and then again when the children were in tenth grade, okay? So they were, it was all about how, about parenting time, and it, it really revolved around uh, kids' health and how parenting time with the father affected uh, kids' health. And so here's what they came up with. Okay, so finding number one was Frequency is a poor measure of parenting time. So what does that mean? If I say to you, uh, Rob, you saw your child four times this month, that could mean almost anything, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay? So a mom can say, he's he seen, he seen him four times this month. What are you talking about? Okay? Right? That might be 10 minutes, mm -hmm. one time, that might be, I ran into you at the grocery store, okay? That might be, uh, we Zoomed for a minute or whatever, okay? I couldn't drop them off at soccer, so I may, you know, ask you to do it, all right? 
frequency is not really uh, a, a important measuring stick in itself, okay? Quantity versus quality is a straw man. What's a straw man? A straw man argument. Matt, you know what it is? Fake. Right, fake. It's like a, you're, you're, you're coming up with something that doesn't really prove anything. Right? Okay, so we'll go back to it. Quantity leads to more father-child interaction, which leads to quality parent-child relationship. So this is frequency, this is quantity. You understand the difference between the two words? Right? So again, frequency is how many times I did something. Quantity is how many, right? So quantity, I can come up with some hours behind that now. Okay, so yeah, I only saw my child three times this month, but it was for three weekends. You see the difference? So that makes a difference. So what happens with that is now, just based on the fact that I'm spending that much time with the child, my quality of interaction goes up. Right? Uh, who's, um, who, has, who, who keeps their grandkids alive? Right? Okay. How, how, how's that? Uh, how old? How old? They ran from 16 to 4. Okay. Let me let me focus on the four-year-old. Okay. So, the, how's the disciplining the four-year-old? Is that a pleasant experience for you? Absolutely not. Okay. All right. So, what's so difficult about it? Because it's my grandchild. It's your grandchild. You don't want to do it. Right. Okay. Who else? Donna. What my nine-year-old granddaughter? Yeah. What? How, how do you discipline her? She gets away a little bit more than my daughter did. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Same with you? Basically, yes. Yeah. Okay. My eight year old gets a away with yeah. okay. year old, okay. year old get, get away with more. <laughs> okay. So now let me bring it back. Who about fatherhood uh director or people that work for fathers right here? Okay. What do fathers say a uh, non custodial parent? Let's go non custodial parent. I know what that means. I don't want to use industry yeah. terms. You don't live with your kids. Okay, what did they say what, about disciplining their kids? The mom does it. The mom does it. Yeah. Anybody else? Go ahead. Um, I have a lot of fathers that say when they have to, because of the time they're not there all the time, they're the bad guys. There it is. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, so. Go ahead. But even different. The fathers speak differently. Dads talk one time and they listen. <laughs> Where mothers weep, they continue. So there's a difference. I hear both. Okay, so, that's good. Yeah. And I agree with what, what you're saying because um, my husband always said that when our grandkids come come to the house, uh -huh. he speaks one time. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Me, they want to keep trying Nana. <laughs> they want to try Nana. But Nana, and he says, no, what is what I say and that's what goes. And they love it up. Yeah. It, it's, it, it's interesting because I, my parents got divorced, but they worked closely together. They lived three minutes apart, right? <laughs> So I live with my dad for a while, and I live with my mom. She's here in California. But anyway, the worst thing, the, the worst six or seven words that my mother could say to us is, I'm going to call your father. Okay? Please, whatever you want. <laughs> whatever it is you're asking for, don't call him. Because he is going to be like, okay, why are you not doing what you're supposed to be doing for your mother. And it, it, it's interesting, and I'll just say that too, because we do a father's walk to school every year. And, and, and <laughs> this year we had you know, 18,000 dads walk to school. Yeah. Teachers tell us that on the father's walk to school, it's the best behaved <laughs> day of the school. <laughs> <laughs> That's the pride. All right, good stuff. So. I think many of you will agree that a lot of times, if you're able to spend more time with your kids, with your kids, it makes the discipline that much easier, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, if you're going to, um, if you're going to say something negative to somebody, is that much, is that received better from somebody you know well, or somebody that? you barely know or you're barely around, somebody right? You barely know. And 
nobody wants to be the, just the enforcer all the time. Okay? And again, that is, that is a role that we've often been put into as fathers, but we don't want to be the bad guy all the time. We don't want you associating us with negativity, right? So you're setting your kids up for feeling that way. And we'll talk about it. And I talk about this all the time. I'm sure it's a sign of my, sign of my age. But the uh, children are the future parents. I mean, if you are doing your work and you're not thinking of it in those terms, you need to start. Absolutely. Because that is, they are watching everything you do as far as how they are going to parent. And so this is where I make sure that I emphasize that fathers are equally as important to their daughters as they are their sons. Because, again, I'm, a, I'm an old jock. I played three sports, played football, college, and all that stuff. And me and my dad have a great relationship. But it's not a father and son situation. It's fathers and children, right? Extremely, extremely important. I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. They asked me to come out and speak at schools and do different things. And they'll say, all right, we're so excited. We got 38 boys in the library for you to talk to. You know, I'm like, where are the girls? Where are the girls? <laughs> right? Oh, well, it was fatherhood. We thought you might want to. Well, yeah, but, you know, I wasn't a biology major, but I think when they have kids, <laughs> probably both will be involved. You know? So, again, I just can't emphasize it enough that it's that being there all the time. And so in our fatherhood work throughout the years, when we'll see people my age and your age and wherever, I mean, literally, Brett, you said the five or six words. I, I'll give you five words that just, you know, simple five words. Tell me about your dad. And then you'll see some emotion. Nobody ever goes, eh. <laughs> right? Tell me about your dad. Eh. Nobody does that. Okay? Everybody, oh, he was the greatest. Or they go, that's son of a, right? Okay? So that just gives you an idea right there of how impactful fatherhood is and the basis of what they're going to say is about how much time he spent with them. It doesn't have anything to do with money. It doesn't have anything to do with a lot of times even with the, uh, the discipline and things like that. Kids, People, everybody, they want to be disciplined. They do. But they're not going to take it from somebody that they barely know. Or somebody that they don't think has the, their best interest at heart. Okay? Would you? No. Right? Think about you, your life right now. If you have a boss that you like, uh, they don't care nothing about me. Right? They're just trying to check off a box and look good for their boss. I'm not listening to anything they say, right? If I have a boss that, oh, Mike, we want you to go here and do this and that. Okay. You tell me I can't do something, I'm listening to it. I'm going to take it and keep it moving, right? And that's the way any kind of supervision or management is, right? People don't, I've been, a, I've been in management a long time. People don't like me comparing management to parenthood because they go, I'm not a child. But, um, but it's very, very similar. Okay, all right, all of these, uh, got all these, quality, all right, all right. And this is all gonna get sent out, they said. Okay, so practical reasons parenting time is important. You're gonna, I said, I told you, I'm a, I'm a teacher, so I'm, so I'm gonna make you read. Read the first one for me. And see if you can find out about important events such as uh, plays, sporting events, teacher conferences, doctor's appointments, etc. Okay, again, I apologize. NTP is not custodial parent. Okay, so that's, a, that's an important reason. Where are, my school, where are my school people? Keisha's not in here. Anybody work in the schools? Okay, good. I'm going to beat the schools up later. Okay, so, um, so, but, uh, so you can find out about important events <laughs> such as plays, sporting events, etc. So that's one of the main reasons, a practical reason, to, fight, to have parenting time. If I'm not around you, then how am I gonna find out about those type of things, okay? If I have a different address than you as the father and everything, what do we say, what do I say at school when, you, when you're leaving? Hey, something in your bag. Tell your mom, Friday, family night is Friday, okay, right? 
Alright, so as long as I'm around, I'm going to find out about these things. Okay? Very important. That's the basis of, hey, how come he didn't show up? He doesn't, he doesn't care about his kid. <coughs> he didn't know about it. Right? <coughs> so it's easy for you to say, well, how come your dad, how, her dad's never at the plays. He doesn't like, he must not, she must not be, she must not have a good dad. He didn't know about the play. So, why would you say that? Go ahead. And unfortunately, you don't want to beat up the schools, but I'll beat up the schools. <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> the, the schools won't send the information most times to both the non-custodial and the custodial parent. That's right. Unless you're there asking for it. That's right. All right, next one. Relationship building, which can lead to better discipline. Okay, I already talked about that a bit. Consistency, children need it. Okay, right? So, <clears throat> if you have a child that's acting out, I would bet a decent amount of money. I work for the county, I don't have much. But I would, I would, bet, would, I would bet a decent amount of money that a big part of it is because you're being, you're being inconsistent. They don't know what to expect, right? So all our events back home, you know, the fatherhood events or whatever, how come nobody comes? Or in my case, how come nobody comes to your events all the time? Because they know when it is, okay? They know where it is and they know by looking at me, there's going to be food there, okay? <laughs> and then, and you know, and it's free and all of that stuff, right? Okay, so very much, very consistent with what we do, right? So uh, I have a federal judge, Judge Rice. I don't know if you know Judge Rice, but um, Judge Rice has been on the bench over 50 years. And so he, uh, just to give you an idea, the federal building in Dayton got named after him. And not only is he still alive, he's still on the bench. Okay, so he was uh, he was appointed by Jimmy Carter. Do I need to keep going? Okay. All right. So, so Judge Rice speaks at all of my events, and it's so funny the people that have been there. Like, Man, I love Judge Rice. I heard him so many times. Like, he, says, he says the same thing every time. Right? You know? Right? I say, yeah, I know that, but. There are some people in this room that haven't been here as many times as you, and, there, and you yourself probably need to be reminded of some of the things he's saying, and there are other people that have never heard him before at all. So you're going to keep seeing Judge Rice, okay, because of that consistency. And other people will say, you got to come to the fatherhood bike when you hear this guy, Judge Rice, right, okay? So you know it's automatically going to happen. Now, we mix it up. We're not going to make it, you know, too, too boring like that. But you have to have that consistency. Children need that more than anything. Okay? Need that more than anything. Again, I brag to you about Wayne Newsom. Wayne Newsom was always home. Right? He was there. All right? Yes, he coached Little League and did a bunch of other stuff that, you know, every father can't or doesn't, you know, necessarily have to do. But the main thing was, I wasn't going to come home and be like, oh, <coughs> dad, what is this? Right? OK? Uh, you know I, have that, I had that consistency. And of course, it helped with my discipline. It made you know, my house wasn't going to be the party house. All right? If you think back to the party house in high school, I will, again, bet you a decent amount of money there was no father at that house. Right? And that, believe me, I was a teenage boy. We knew where they were. <laughs> okay? We knew we knew those houses. All right? Oh, yeah, her dad. No, she don't even have a dad. Okay? Right? Let's go over there. Have, some, have a good time. Okay? And so that's what that was about. Last one. Uh, go ahead. Setting an example, children of the future parents. Okay. I already mentioned that. So, um, again, the future parents. All right. I won't go into Whitney Houston. Yeah, Mike. Mike. Yes, yes, Rob. I think the other that uh, is a is a parallel to that is not only are they the future parents, but the children are our future citizens. Excellent. The future leaders, future workers. Excellent. So he said the parents are the future. I mean, children are the future. Parents, leaders, citizens. Mm -hmm. Not just not just parents, mm -hmm. but 
citizens. And that's great. I, I just wanted to add one more that, yeah. that I, I use when I'm talking to parents. There's certain things in life that there's no do-overs. Nice. You miss that first play in the first grade. <laughs> yeah. You miss that first baseball game. Yeah. You don't get to do it over. That's right. That's gone. So That's when right. they think back about those experiences, and you think, oh, I can make up for it. They, now, you don't get a chance to do that first thing over yeah, again. Yeah. And it's, you're right. And it's amazing the way that stuff sticks with people. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's incredible. I mean, I said, I mean, I grew, you know, I grew up in the same town that my parents grew up in, in Zinia. And I mean, there are people that will, I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable the stuff that people will say from our childhood. That, and, and they, they just, they don't forget it. But listening from the child point of view, I recently lost my husband in May, so, and my husband and I was at all of our grand our grandsons' uh, football games and mm -hmm. all of their activity. So I was out of town. I went out of town just to get some clarity of myself. And my grandson called me and said, "Nana, you're not going to be at the football game." I said, "Well, no, I'm not going to be there because Nana's not in town." I said, "But." You and Poppy is always at our game. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. How you not going to be at our game? It made you feel some kind of way. Mm -hmm. So I told my sister, I said, listen, until football season is over, <laughs> I'm not coming to visit you guys anymore because I'm going to be at every game. Yeah. I'm not going to work. I'm going to be at those games because him and I was always at their games. And there's three of them. So we went from one game, watching half of one game, going to another go. field, running to another field all over the place. So I understand the children understand that consistency that they have to go on with. And yeah. it's, it's amazing how first they thing, see view things. First thing that happened, I crossed that goal line, get to the, to the sideline, to look for my parents. First yeah. thing, I mean, it yeah. yeah. didn't matter what age, mm -hmm. first thing. Right? Yeah. And that's just, just the way it is, right? Okay, so again, when we start that, I don't want to get off on a child support or anything else tangent, but so we're talking about prevention and those type of things. People ask me this all the time. What are you doing about prevention with the fathers? What are you, you know, handing out condoms? What are you doing? You know, and so I say, well, the main thing I'm doing for prevention is telling them that they have to spend a bunch of time with their kids. Because if you start spending a bunch of time with your kids, guess what? You don't want six or seven of them, right? Because you only have limited time. You have your own life to live, right? OK? All right? I consider myself a great father. Ask me how many kids. I got two, OK? Right? So, and again, it compromises your ability to be a great parent. I won't just say father, OK? So that is one of the main things. Again, I think it kill several birds with one stone. You have to encourage your, encourage your uh, clients and, of course, your family um, to spend time and be there for your kids because then it's going to make you reassess how many uh, kids you want to bring into the world. Okay, like I said, don't get, I'll be on that all day. Okay, all right, so barriers to parenting time. Uh, number one, the custodial parent or caretaker, right? Okay, I love anything that has to do with child support, the social services, fatherhood, whatever. I get so excited when the room is half female. It's just, I mean, it excites me, right? Because I used to have to talk, go out and talk to the guys and do these fatherhood talks out in the, I don't, you know, I tell, I tell them to you, you'll laugh. My, we talk about words matter. I don't use words like H-O-O-D, so I would go out and talk where I call it the higher needs area, okay? And um, a lot of the guys out in the higher needs areas would, um, would like to just have a woman bashing session, okay? And so I would say, well, you know, that's all well and good, but I'm a child support supervisor back in that day, and uh, I get calls from both parties. So while you're talking about how horrible she is, she's talking about how lazy you are. Okay, so let's just get that straight. So the uh, barrier to not being able to see your children sometimes is the custodial parent, let's just call it what it normally is, the mom. Okay, I don't wanna, I don't wanna mince words. All right, so uh, somebody please let me know why you would maybe not wanna let your non-custodial parent father see your children. 
Our poor relationship. You, I'm gonna come back to you. A poor relationship. What can you could you expound on that? Most definitely. So in my experience, professionally and personally, oftentimes there's still an intimate relationship still going on between the parents, oh. and oftentimes mom is a little bit bitter because dad is not really trying to be in a relationship. So being able to establish boundaries is important because that will eliminate that issue and improve that relationship between those parents. Interesting. So you're saying you don't want to let him come over because y'all might do something you shouldn't do and blur the lines. Pretty much. Okay, good. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely more to it than, than just that, but... Uh, you know, I have to simplify. So that, so that, I have to simplify yeah. for the crowd. Okay, yeah. 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 So much more than that. And then you also have, you have those... Um, her friends, her family, who are also gatekeepers and know what healthy there. relationships yeah. look like. Um, okay. Good. Good stuff. Go ahead. The power struggle. Power struggle, yeah. she said. What's that mean? That whoever has kids or custody of the kids is using that as pawns. Nice. Lifestyle. Like, okay. What's that mean? Lifestyle means um, a lot of times the, the father into that uh, lifestyle where... <laughs> Um, I, I want to be <laughs> correct on how I say this. I can, I'm laughing because I can tell you're trying to, you're trying to come up with the right words and not offend me, right? I can tell, you know, I'm, you, know you, have, I'm, I'm you, have that, you have that street life. Okay, that street life. You have that street life. Okay. And um, it doesn't always accommodate your child being in it. This is how a lot of, we lose a lot of our children. Okay. I got the sag pants and I'm... Well, not I'm so listening much to that, listen to that the rap income, music. How the income is coming in. Income is coming in. And, you know, they, I'm, a, they, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an avenue sales person. You're an avenue yeah. sales person. <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> What's that again? Not paying. Not paying. Call it what it is. Right? Call it what it is. <laughs> she, he said he, he's not paying, so mom said, you know, I'm not, you're not paying, she's not playing. So okay, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Sometimes dad doesn't know how to take care of the child. Mm. Excellent. Excellent. Go browse, by the way. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so domestic violence is one. But for you, a mother is always going to think that a father can't take care of her child. Sure However, he takes care of the child that, you know, the best way that he can. So that's one of the things we try to educate our moms on, too. And if they haven't been taught, and like you say, when you have that one parent in the house, if they haven't been taught by a man how to provide and take care of a child, right. it's hard for them to do it without some parenting. Right. That's right. But you know, when we talk about barriers, uh, I tell dads all the time, the custodial, non -cust the custodial parent can only be a barrier to the extent you, you let them be. If you go to juvenile court, you establish your parenting plan that says, I got this child on Friday to Sunday, or I got him half the time and you got him half the time. The document is written. Either parent does not conform with the document is in contempt of court. So I don't care whether you like me or not, have my child there on Thursday, okay? It, it, number one, number one. So you, you give people control as much as you want to be involved. The second thing is, and I tell parents this sometimes on both sides. You know, sometimes we look at children, what, what do we like to say? It takes a village, right? Mm -hmm. It takes a village. However, when one doesn't like the other one, right? And I don't want you to do nothing. To, I don't want you to have nothing to do with him, but mommy or daddy. <laughs> Would you rather have your child have four grandparents or two? Right. 16 cousins <laughs> or 30? So sometimes when you're doing that selfish thing, right? You are being selfish at the extent of your child because you're not expanding the village. You're keeping that village within just your family. And you know we all got scared on, on both sides of the family. So you can't say my, my family is great and your family is not. <laughs> but, 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 I mean, but, we want to, but when we want to talk about the, what's best for the kids, we want them to have that larger support group. And, you know, we don't want to just be selfish because of our individual reason, man or woman. That's right. Excellent. Very well said. All right. Next, the custodial parents' family. You, you touched on it down at the end. Uh, the custodial parents' family a lot of times is not, 
you know, hey, you know, I'd like to let you come over, but, you know, my mama can't stand you, right? Okay, so um, maybe it's because of the lifestyle, okay? I'm, like I said, I'm a, I'm a, I, I, could, I could stay on that for a while, but I won't. But the, the uh, custodial parents' family, so they can be a gatekeeper, especially if mom is living with them, right? So that obviously is a problem. Now, children's services. Are there any children's services people here? Mm. Okay. So how, does, how can children's services be a barrier to parenting time? Anybody? Let me count the ways. Yeah. Okay, no, go ahead. I, I, be, right. Because once it, you know, one would think that when someone goes into children's services and from one side of the, side of the family, the obvious, the first person that you should be thinking of for the place that child would be the biological father. However, in, in, in reality, a lot of times they think it's the maternal grandmother. Well, wait a minute. So mentally, we ought to be thinking, okay, if there's a biological family involved, that should be the first choice, okay? And, and so sometimes they, they, they do not have that vision, if you will, and so sometimes they, they can be a barrier. And like we said before, you know, you end up, you could end up with a child in foster care because the father who really wants to be going through six or seven uh, hoops to become a, you know, the uh, established parent. That's right. So it, it happens. I'm laughing because you're using logic again. So <laughs> the, um, you know, again, the, uh, the, the, he's exactly right. It's not only logical, but it's actually statutory help me out Rob that um, you know when the child gets taken from the mother's home the father is supposed to be they're supposed to look for the father right and so um, and to your point the point that I always make about that is if you don't find the father you don't find the father's family so even if she is correct that dad is a gangbanger and a thug and maybe even locked up at the moment uh, now you're shutting off the sister, the brother, the uncle, the grandma, et cetera, that could possibly raise the child. And from a financial standpoint, all of our counties, some better than others, uh, could save a lot of money by placing those children with families, biological families, whom we do not have to pay, versus uh, foster families. Go ahead, I'm sorry. I was just going to speak on that. Okay. Um, currently working in the prison system, and we see it all the time when kids go into foster care, um, one or two things happens. There's a few counties in Ohio that do contact us and look for the father's family, but the majority of them don't give the fathers any rights, That's right. especially if they're incarcerated. Yep. Which is terrible. Yes. Okay. So I have a question. Yep. Because now I'm kind of confused. It's kind of like a Q and A. It's very confusing. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. So. I have a relative, which is my brother. He had a son. Uh -huh. He's been trying to find it. The, the lady and him went parts. Yep. They severed their, their ties together. Yep. And he tried to find his son. Uh -huh. And he couldn't, so we went online. My sister and I took it upon ourselves. We went through Facebook because social media is everything. Is. So we found him. Uh -huh. And we made contact and we reached out to him and we talked to him. So we talked to the mother, and the first thing came up, she's like, no, he's not, you know, he has a dad now, but that's not his biological father. Yeah. He's been trying to pay child support, he's been trying to get in contact with him so he can have his check coming to him, you know, from Social Security and everything. She's like, no, I don't want anything to do. I don't want him to have anything to do with him. So we reached out to him, he gave us his phone number, we called the phone number again, my sisters and I, there's no contact. She had the number changed. Yeah. I mean, we didn't do anything. We just said yeah. we wanted a relationship because yeah. this is our nephew yeah. and we wanted a relationship. Whatever goes on between you, the dad, and the son, yeah. that's yeah. their business. But yeah. give us, allow us the opportunity. Well, once again, as a non-custodial parent, unless he goes to court, which we'll address later, he really doesn't have any rights yeah. for, yeah. for parenting time, which mm -hmm. means you don't have any. Mm -hmm. Okay, pretty much. So exactly. that's the unfortunate answer to your question. Okay. Uh, the dad's significant other. How about uh, the new girlfriend? Oh, come on. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Do you know, um, because I'm in a heart illness and I did last time, 
She's an attorney, by the way. Let me get that. Let me, let me preface that. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. So I'm just curious. Is there any data for us to know how many children that go into children's services have seen do not have paternity status? Their fathers. Because that's a huge hurdle. Absolutely. Well, and there's data if you can get children's services to give it to you. Okay. And, um, I'm relying on you, Mike. I know, yes, I'm sure you do. But, um, but, the, but yeah, I mean, the, uh, you know, the, there's, there's, a, there's data, and then there's, does anybody want to do anything to change it? Right. I, okay, just, I so, feel like that's the first step in, yeah. in getting fathers where they need to be is paternity. It is. And I think often, as the child support enforcement agency, people yeah. forget we do that. That's right. Or free. That's right. Um, or we can assist well, with that. And I feel like we need to be better marketers of that service, yeah. mm -hmm. um, which ultimately helps fatherhood. You're right. Too. You're right. But again, you have to have the will to help fatherhood. I'm not trying to be. You said you're right. No, no. No, you are right. No. You know, you always know you're right. No, but the, um, the, the uh, you have to have the will as the, the uh, who did I see coming in? What's her, uh, is Anne in here? Anne Reem? Okay. So I'll give you a quick Anne Reem story. So Anne um, uh, works in uh, Summit County, and um, she is with uh, Children's Services. Right, so about eight or nine years ago, I had just become I was, became father director in 2010. So I went up there, and they had established this uh, wonderful program where they had a fatherhood practitioner with their office in Summit County Children's Services. I was blown away by it. Okay, by the fact that they did it. But what's even was even more, and again, I don't. You know, I have to talk about the elephant in the room. It was like four or five white women that did it, right? And so I told them, I said, your impact on you doing this is, any, is probably more than anything I could even do. Because it's showing other workers, other female workers, and this is a female dominated industry, let's just be honest, showing them that fatherhood is very important. And that comes across a lot better from them than it does me, right? Because I'm what a father. You walk out here, he goes talking about father all the time, right? Okay, but if a woman does it, then it's very important. So to your point, um, you know, if Children's Services is on board with it, they can make it happen. But and like you said, it's not hard to find out who the father of these kids are. I mean. Don't get me started. I set up a whole thing where they could just email us and we could look at sets and send it back to them. Okay? Not interested. Okay? So that again that you have to have the you have to have the will there. Okay? Good question. All right, let me keep moving. <laughs> work. So of course obviously can't see my kids if I have to work all the time, right? Huge underrated one that people don't understand. Okay? You're telling me to do ten different things. Anybody work with people coming out of incarceration? If you do not have an appreciation for how many different things somebody that comes out on paper or on probation uh, has to do, you need to educate yourself on that. It's unbelievable. How many different places they have to go, fines they have to pay, people they have to see, boxes they have to check. It's incredible. And of course, do what? Work. Okay. Uh, you were an hour late coming over here. I'm not letting you take it with you. Yeah. Wow, really? I got held over from work. The bus was late. I could go on and on. Okay, you're a bad father. All right. The courts, of course. I'll come back to your file a pro se packet. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Pro se packet. If I know what that is, you can file a, a a packet so that you get rights to see your child. Okay. Now, sadly. And I'm going to brag on Montgomery County, which I often do. You will never find a more father-friendly county than Montgomery County. We have some, I got some Montgomery County people here. I got the, the judge, Judge Wallace will come and speak at my fatherhood summits and everything. But even she, the head of juvenile court, cannot put much teeth into those visitation orders. Okay? So yes, you can say, if you don't come to, if you don't uh, comply with what we came up with, the standard visitation order, I'm going to take you for contempt. But 
And it, you're right. And what happens? Is, I don't have money to take you for contempt. Exactly. What happens right? is that that does not get followed. That's the right. mother, the the non the custodial parent, in most cases, do not get charged with contempt. And that's that's a problem. That's right. That's a yeah. system wide yeah. problem yeah. because when things are reversed, and mm -hmm. father say, when it's reversed, all right. Then you're going to be. I'm going to be arrested by tomorrow morning. Right. However, you know when it's when it's yeah. they will say when it's the mom that's in the in in. Uh, this is the same thing about child support. That's right. How many have, how many times have you ever seen a wanted person wanted poster for a mother who hasn't paid child support? Rarely. Never. Never. I can answer that. So. Oh. <laughs> so. <laughs> so so I, I mean so yeah, yeah I'll, just, I'll just say that. But I think your your best option is when you have it defined in paper yeah. what your rights are. You know. Then you're you're much you're much long, further along. Agree. And again, I'm not saying don't do it. No, but the right. point yeah. is, they can be a barrier. That's okay? true. If you're going through a divorce, I don't want to. I get on this uh, non I'm in the uh, juvenile court or children born out of wedlock cases all the time. I don't want to uh, be on that only. If you're going through a divorce, you may get a divorce decree that's not very father friendly. Okay. So it's not just. Uh, kids born out of wedlock, you know what everything revolves around the court. You got to have the best what? Oh, yeah. That's the term. Okay. I teach at the prison uh, for Sinclair at Dayton Correctional. One of my favorite exercises. Who in here had a who in here had a private attorney? <laughs> 20 people, one. Maybe. Yeah. Okay? Maybe. You often it's crickets like. Private attorney, what's he talking about? <laughs> right? Okay, so again, that's reality. All right, the schools. We talked about the schools a little bit earlier. The schools sometimes can be barriers. They won't even let you come in. There are some schools won't even let you come in as a father. I mean, I can tell you some horror stories over the years. I'll tell you some, some horror stories from the battlefields, okay? They won't even allow you to come in unless you show your custody or visitation papers. You're who? Marissa Newsom's dad. We've never seen you. Okay? Well, I am, I promise. Okay? Well, do you have some kind of paperwork? Okay? Right? Uh, besides that being ridiculous and you keeping me from seeing my child, what if I'm maybe not the most having it together person to begin with, and it took a lot for me to come up there. Right. Am I coming back? Mm -hmm. no. Right? Okay, so again, the schools, and again, I always have to try to play devil's advocate. I understand the security and the safety thing. It's like my people at Children's Services like to tell me, Mike, you don't understand, we're looking out for the best interest of the child. Okay, I don't know what that means I'm doing, but um, so uh, we get you, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to speak on that a little bit because I ran a Head Start. And we do have parents or fathers mm -hmm. that will come in and want to see their children. Yep. Well, <laughs> it has to be on the document that the mother, because the father have not been in the child's life, and we don't know if you are the father. Right on. Right. You could be anyone off the street. That's right. So you have to, the mom has to, even if you guys are not together, she has to put you on either on the application or on a pickup list. Okay. So to be so to be clear, I can't put myself on. No. No, because I haven't met you. Okay. Now if you are the one that came in to do the enrollment. So I have to be at enrollment. You have to bring some type it still has to be some type of identification. Just like the mom has to bring a, some type of identification. Okay, the birth certificate has the mom name. Uh -huh. Okay. The birth certificate on the father is blank. Okay. Okay. So if you come in and say, well, I'm the father of so-and-so, I don't know that. Okay. And then if I check my paperwork and there's no name, sure. I cannot just say, okay, you can come and visit the child. I got you. That is an issue. I understand. It's a safety issue and it's hazardous for us. I understand. So that has to be something put in place. You're right. And so that leads me to, just like I was talking about children's services, any good fatherhood programming, we're going to do what? We're going to make sure, tell the father, you have to do your part. 
Okay, so I, I always tell these guys, oh, children's services took my child, Mr. Newsom, gave him to the, guy, the lady sister, and I didn't even know. Well, you should have known, I mean, because you're not, I tell every one of them, especially ones that have just gotten out of incarceration, if your child is involved with children's services, you need to contact them and say, my, this is, my name is Mike Newsom, my phone number is blah, 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 I'm the father of, if you have any problems, contact me first. I don't want you to call anybody else. You don't need to call her aunt or anybody else. You contact me. I'm the, I'm the father. I can give you proof of uh, paternity, whatever you need, and I want you to know. So in your case, dad hopefully could be involved in enrollment and say, I'm here too. And I'm going to hope that if mom says, yeah, he's here, but... I don't want it that you're going to say, I'm sorry. He's the no. father. We're going to give him some, some, uh, some love, too. Yeah, we, we, we don't do that. Once the father has some type of, okay, maybe they're not together, but they have joint custody. So there's some type of documentation on that. Oh, so if he has uh, uh, joint custody, mm -hmm. something from the county uh -huh. or court, anything, he can bring that in, and he has a right to see his child. We yeah. cannot say you cannot see the child because we have the proper documentation. Beautiful. Okay? That's good information. <laughs> I don't know who and where y'all work at. <laughs> <laughs> but I work in a poverty program. I work where 70% of the fathers don't show up for paternity tests. Mm -hmm. I show up where there's no names on no birth certificates. It's only job and family services because the mom would say, eat a daddy. And at some point later, they get this child support because they never participated in the process. So all the things that are going on are almost impossible for the fathers that I work with to make happen in a timely or orderly fashion. It just doesn't happen. Okay. Not in Franklin County. No, yeah. Well, you know. Speak to that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, speak to that. In yeah, County. because, and so again, this is what, as I said at the beginning, I like when there's both genders in the room, because this is what you get. You get the, oh my God, are you serious? I'm supposed to go do all that stuff you just asked me to do? That's never going to happen. Okay? So, Therein lies the rub, as they say, right? So you have to try to figure out how we can make it father friendly, yes. but keep the children safe. Okay, now I'll just give you again a brief example of something we were able to do in Montgomery County. We set up a legal clinic with the public defender's office uh, every other month, and the dads can come in from four to seven and get those kind of things, those kind of documents done for free. Okay, so that kind of is something that, again, we have to, we need, here's the important part, all right? We need all of you, when you learn about these type of programs, to put the word out and make sure that fathers know that they're available and don't just sit there and say, well, they don't want to see their kids, they don't want to do nothing. Okay, so give them the info. Then if they don't follow up, then you can come back and tell me. Mike, they don't want to see their kids. Okay, go ahead. One of the fun things that we found, I'll have to, I'll probably argue with you about the, the most friendly, father-friendly county. But <laughs> Good, I like that. In Cuyahoga County, we act, I, I actually funded somebody from the uh, from juvenile court to have an office in the child support building. Love it. So that before you left the building, when you get your child support established, you can stop by the office and find out what the forms were and help them fill out the forms for uh, for custody visitation. But when we talk about that, sometimes we'll talk about safety, and and sometimes we'll say, and I'll I'll give you a great example of frustration that you get from some folks. Will say, well, okay, I'm paying child support, uh, but the mom has moved, and I don't know where she is, right? Yep. But I'm sending checks to child support. But I go to juvenile court and I say, um, all right, I'm going to file for my legal custody invitation, but I don't know where the address is. Okay? And then you go back to your support officer and you say, hey, what's the address? <laughs> where, where am I sending my checks? I can't tell you. I can't tell you. Now, I'm a father, right? And I'm trying to file for my rights, right? I'm sending a check. No, you're sending a check to a particular address, right? So you know the address, right? 
Now, I she didn't move, didn't tell me, but I'm still telling my, you know the address, but you can't tell me or juvenile court that address to send the paperwork for my custody and visitation. Put the shoe on the other foot. Attorney, cut me out. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, no, you take. Yeah, yeah. I want. I want. I, I would really like to hear your response to that. Okay, say what you said again. I said. Okay, I said. There's a father who's paying child support. He goes to a juvenile court. I want to establish my legal custody visitation and my parenting plan so I can see my kids on a regular basis. But the mother's moved. I don't have their address. And then they said, Well, child support has the address because you're sending a check to him. All right, so go back to child support. Oh, where's the address you're sending my check so I can send my paperwork to get my legal custody visitation? You will say to him, I can't give you that. Yeah, we have certain parameters by law. That it, that, that's, I know, but here I am. Again, back to safety. But here, yeah, exactly, but here I am. I'm a frustrated person. I know you have the address. <laughs> and you've told me that in order for me to see my child, I have to go to juvenile court. So I'm following your advice, and I'm going to juvenile court, and I'm filing, and they're saying, hey, we can't send her the paperwork without the address. Now I have to find, I got to find a private investigator, right, to find out where she's living, to send the paperwork where you know. You know, you know where it is. Absolutely, and we're yeah. not allowed to give it. Exactly. And so that's but what I would also say is we had to find him. No, 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 not in this particular case. No, not in this particular case. No, what I'm saying, hold up, I'm not done. Yeah. What I'm saying is, is that we have to go through channels to locate, locate people, period. But no, no, this is not the case. No, 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 no. I know you have I'm helping you out. But I know you have to do that sometimes. What I'm saying is, people can use those locate services to locate people in general, right? So we're... So the father could, in essence, use whatever no. we've used, most okay. likely, to locate mother. Social media, right. her family, those are the okay, things so that we you'll, use. So you'll, you'll give the father advice, hey, why don't you use the same locating things that we use? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Go ahead, Rob. Okay. It, it really is a, a dilemma. <laughs> we, we have a, a program in, in Stark County, um, that it's a parenting time order program, and we partner with Community Legal Aid. So that when someone, uh, a, a father, wants to have parenting time, we will uh, move exactly. forward. We do do a check for domestic violence, and if there's not domestic violence prevalent or present, then and it is means tested, but it's 250 percent federal poverty level or below, so it's pretty pretty yeah. progressive on that. We will be able to uh, have community legal aid take that case into court to either establish a parenting time order. Or if there's an attorney time order in existence but non-compliant, they'll take it into court to enforce. Yeah. Now if and, and the address won't be an issue there because we we'll, we'll share that we won't share the address with the father, but we can That's share right. the address with the court and with mm -hmm. community legal aid who, right. through a contract. They're taking that in. That's right. For attorney time. One more. Go ahead, real quick. But as I was just talking back here, if there's no domestic violence involved and there's no record of domestic violence then why is it this parent this father able to find out where his check is going so he can visit his child yeah because it's a, again it's a stalker law it's called so that you can't just go in and say where's my thing going and go find the mom and to do harm so okay. i'm not taking any side that's just where it is i got people okay so uh background or criminal record right so that can also be a barrier to you seeing your child especially if you're trying to uh, you're trying to file for uh, parenting time, a lot of times the courts will be a little less likely to give you the opportunity. It can also lead to an easier uh, uh, TRO or temporary restraining orders, right? Okay. Uh, this guy used to, you know, he raped somebody 22 years ago, so he's a violent offender. Um, maybe we need to have a hearing about whether he needs to see his child or not. I don't know about that. Okay, so that can also be a barrier. All right, let me move on, try to get to some solutions. Okay, so the custodial parent or caretaker, we talked about this a little bit. The CP custodial parent has a new significant other or dad has a new significant other, right? The CP and the dad just cannot get along. Okay, 
uh, custodial parents' family. So bad history, multiple breakups, right? I don't know why you're still with him. Y'all keep killing me. You tell me how terrible he is, and he come back, okay? Like a bad penny, keep turning up, right? And so they may have had custody at one point. We deal with this a lot, right, with the grandparents. You know, I took care of these kids for a long time. Now here you two knuckleheads come back trying to want to, you know, do whatever, okay? So I mean that, again, you can understand how not only have they gotten maybe attached to the children and don't want to give them up, but also they're thinking, as soon as I get my house back together, you better drop this seven-year-old back over here. I already know, I already know that game, okay? So you can't blame them. They only know the negative things about dad. So that's another reason that they may be a barrier. Okay, so children's services, they're interested in the child's welfare. So to them, maybe the uh, foster family that we've used 34 times and we know that they're not going to do anything is better than unknown Uncle Mike. Okay, you know, well, Uncle Mike seems okay, but we don't really know him. Okay, so we're going to take the easy route and give it to this foster family that we've used a hundred times. And if you ask me why, I'm going to say, because I'm interested in the child's welfare. Right? Lack of diversity in staff, and there I'm talking about gender diversity mostly. Okay, so a lot of uh, them do not... Uh, how can I be politically correct? Don't laugh at me, Walt. Okay, all right, so I'm, not, yeah, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Okay, all right. You know what I mean. I'm not even going to say it. Okay, well, this, is being, this is being taken. All right, prior encounters with dad. So children's services uh, may have had some bad encounters with dad already. Okay? Oh, that guy Mike Newsom? No, he kicked our door in six years ago. No. Right? Okay, so... There's a big, uh, they, that's another reason they could be a barrier. Dad's significant other has had history with the custodial parent, right? AKA, oh, now you want to be with my cousin. <laughs> 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 a bit to have my friend, right? Okay, so, and had history with I ain't like her back in high school, right? She made the cheer squad, I not did. Okay, so uh, has had a child with dad as well, right? That's a big one. She's also got a child with him. Okay. Oh, you want to? Why aren't you taking care of this? One? Now you there, and now then you want to come over and visit him. Okay. Why are you doing that? Right. So again, jealousy in general. I think my young lady at the end here talked about, you know, maybe I still kind of want to be together. May not say it out loud, but I kind of still want to be together. Now here you are with her, and I'm supposed to, you know, send my kid out off to the park with you and your little happy family. <laughs> right? Okay. <laughs> you tell I'm jaded. I've been, to, I've been to business too long now. I need to retire. Okay, all right. So work also, again, fluctuating shifts. Mm -hmm. Thought you were gonna pick them up at, well, they made me stay for overtime. You said Wednesday. Well, now I gotta work on Wednesday. Consistency. Right, okay? Fluctuating shifts. What am I supposed to do, quit work? Then you're gonna be mad enough paying child support. Okay, right? And my, uh, and my PO's not gonna be happy either. Keeping overtime to keep up with child support. Gonna try to, I'm trying to make that extra money, but, right? Some of y'all always mean, what's Bobby Womack? Can't be in two places at the same time, <laughs> right? Okay, right? When I'm home, I'm broke, okay, right? Long commutes that cause late pickups, all right? Mom decides she wants to move to a better school district. Now it's 28 more minutes away from me now, okay? Now I gotta drive all the way over there and now I'm picking the child up late. <coughs> and you're mad at it, okay? Also, the courts. Lengthy delays in getting a hearing at all. During COVID, mm -hmm. I don't know about your county, but God bless you if you want to get a hearing at 
during COVID. And that, that, it's you were in trouble. Yeah. Right? Some of them they did by Zoom. Some of them it was just, we'll get to it when we can get to it. Between the lack of staffing, et cetera, et cetera, tough, tough deal, okay? And so you're saying, he don't want to see his kids. He's not doing anything. I, I can't get a hearing for six months. All that time, I'm not establishing a relationship with my child. I, I hate to interrupt, but no, no. Because I, I really want people to understand how the system was doing. You could conceivably have a child, okay, with someone, establish paternity, and not see that baby until he was one year old. That's right. What, imagine. I mean, think about that in reality. That's right. I got a baby, and I don't see my child, and I don't see him through infant, yeah. infant stages. I don't see him until they're one years old. That was the reality that was going on during COVID. That's right. well, that's now, I, a lot of times when I talk about this, I say reverse the role. Yeah. If a mama couldn't see her baby for the first year of life, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It'd be, it be something, something gonna happen up in here. It'd be hell to pay. Some courts don't offer pro se filings. I was telling them, I get up here a lot of times to speak Montgomery County East, all right? And they're like, five program, what you talking about? Three entry program, what? Okay, so everybody doesn't offer pro se. Uh, bogus or, in, or indefinite temporary restraining orders. Oh. I had a restraining order back in 19, uh, 2007, and I don't know if it's still active or not, right? Okay, that, kind, that stuff could prevent no teeth to the parenting time orders, which we already talked about. All right. The schools banned by the, by the uh, custodial parent without basis. Mm. I don't want him coming up here. He don't need to see her, right? If he comes up here, you what? You call me. Right? You call me. I'll let you know whether he's authorized or not. Okay? Uh, request documentation unnecessary for non custodial parents to participate in school activities. All right? I had a guy that the mother sent the three kids up from Texas, drove them up here from Texas, sent the schools the Registration, all the school records, everything. So I just sent my kids up there. Blah 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 blah. blah. Okay, he went to he went to enroll the kids. You have proof that you're the father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like she sent all the records. Here are the three kids. I'm trying to. Well, I'm sorry. Right? Okay. So we had to get into the uh, legal realm to get it taken care of, but even then, they, they, what it came down to, like with many things, they didn't really know what their policy was. First they told me, well, they're gonna have, he's gonna have to get some kind of uh, uh, custody. I said, do you know how long that's gonna take? You're the school that you're telling me to keep these children out of class all that time mm -hmm. until, they get, until he gets custody. Do you really want, I mean, is that what you're really trying to tell me? Mm -hmm. I'm more concerned about them being in class than you are, and you're the school. Okay? So then it was, oh, well, um, maybe if he just files, then we'll let him in, let him in. Okay? So we had to go ahead and file quickly and got the proof and got him in. But again, that's just an example. And as I always say with these things, what if you don't have anybody advocating for you? Right? He had me. What if you don't have anybody? What are you gonna do? Or you're maybe not very educated. All right, only notify the CP of important dates such as parent-teacher conferences, okay? Well, we let you know when the parent-teacher conference was. Yeah, I know, but I missed pizza night and I missed the fun stuff. I had to come in there and you know, listen to how he can't add, okay, <laughs> right? The police. They have no regard for PT orders sometimes. That was used to be one of our main uh, advice. Keep your parenting time order with you. Mm -hmm. And then when mom says, get off my porch, fool, you can say, I'm calling the police. And they're going to make you honor this order, okay? Well, there are a lot of police that will say, 
That's a civil matter. We don't have anything to do with that. Okay? So now here I am on the porch mad, okay, on Christmas Eve. And uh, what am I supposed to do now? Okay? Always take the CP side, making any conflict between parents a possible arrest for dad. I have a guy that I work with consistently that literally had uh, legal custody of his children and was afraid to not let mom take his children. He was like, I said, Anthony, you have the papers, you have legal custody. When she comes to your house, say, you can't take the children. I have legal custody. He's like, I'm not doing that, Mr. Newsom. I'm going to end up in jail. I'm, I'm not doing that. She can do whatever she wants. Right? And so, again, he had experience with the system of whatever happens is my fault. So he had done everything right, quote unquote. Okay? Still didn't matter. So what happened? That's the reality. Okay. So, could be a factor at the parenting time hearing if you have a background criminal record. Could be a factor with police interaction, like in Anthony's case. Anthony has a background. Okay? So, if a conflict arises, they're running the, they're not running the Mike Newsom. Nothing more than a speed ticket coming up, okay? They're running something a little different when they see that. Oh, yeah. This guy, I'm sure he was, he was out here causing some mayhem. Could live in employment opportunities, which could lead to inability to provide financial support and gain favor with the custodial parent, right? So your criminal background can have a huge effect on whether you get to see your children or not. Because who said it? He's not, she's not paying. You're not seeing your kids, okay? Well, I'm a, words matter, returning citizen, okay? Not an ex-felon or whatever else you use, ex-offender, a returning citizen. I cannot find work. Go ahead. Uh, I had a, a family member that when they were applying, you know, to get the custody of their uh, children, that there was only one negative thing that came from everything and they said, Oh, uh, you've moved too many times. He was in the military. Oh. <laughs> so, yes, he moved because he was in the military. And he, came, but he dropped military, his rank, dropped everything uh, just to be able to get a custody of his children. How dare you want Rob? Okay, so solutions. So, Rob alluded to uh, what's called PTOC, Parenting Time Opportunity for Children. I'll come right back to you. Parenting Time Opportunities for Children which is about setting up, the setting up a uh, parenting time order when you get your child support order at the same time. So there's a huge building in Dayton called the Job Center, okay, so, which is where child support is, is located. We have 14, 18 attorneys, something in there. When you come in and get what's called an administrative hearing, I won't get too far in the weeds, administrative hearing basically means you know, you didn't go to court to get your child support case set up. You came in and got it set up there. We can give you the opportunity to have a parenting time order at the same time, as long as no domestic violence and the two parties agree. Okay, so on the, on the time. And to take it a step further in Montgomery County, if you want to do, do a variance on that, if you want to say, well, I don't, we don't like the standard parenting time order, we want to go with something, we have the Dayton Mediation Center on site, and you can go talk to them. They'll come up with a plan, and you, then you're on your way, okay? Saves you a lot of money on having to file. Help me, Rob. Uh, well, ours is just a little bit different. Okay. We kind of went, and we were originally part of the-, the Yeah, group, absolutely. Talk, which I know Montgomery was the leader of that. But we went, we went beyond that so that we'll take, with our partner Legal Aid, we'll take a case into court uh, after the support order has been established. So Excellent. It's, it's not just, they have more than one bite at the apple. Excellent. Because in PTOC, unfortunately, there's only one bite at the apple. I like it. are doing an administrative order. I right. like it. Right. So he said he can even help you afterwards. Ours is just, we're going we're gonna to do it at the time of the hearing. So that's, that's awesome. So on what the gentleman said up here, where with the military guy, yep. um, they said no because he moved around too much. <laughs> so there is no way that his, court, uh, his parental rights could have been revised because he was military, 
for him to see the kids because I mean, now you're stopping me from seeing my child because I have to work, I have a job that's gonna keep me in and out of town with different yeah. states and stuff. That's right. Well, you sit too close to here, but using logic again. No, but um, no, they, no, but I think um, no. I, I, in a perfect world, they would they would make some kind of uh, you know yeah revision or, or allowance for that. Okay. Uh, also, of course, private attorney. Again, many of your clients are going to laugh at you when you use those two words, right? But again, that's a great solution to be able to see your children. Get a private attorney. The private attorneys will, you know, uh, will go after it and and get it done. Uh, you know, I would say generally speaking, I'm just guessing with uh, an educated guess with some research and, and experience, you could probably get that done for as long as it doesn't get too long and there aren't a bunch of people testifying and all that stuff. Twenty five hundred to five grand if I was if I was being uh, if I had to take a guess at it. OK, so again, that's uh not chunk changes, they say. Pro se, and we already talked about that, you can file on your own. We have an office in Montgomery County called Citizen Services. It's in the basement of juvenile court. You can go down there, they have an attorney there, they will help you. They won't help you fill out the paperwork, but they will tell you, hey, make sure you do this and make sure you do that, don't forget to do this, and all that kind of stuff, and they'll help you uh, file your, your pro se. Mediation, which I already mentioned, Mediation is great. As a judge friend of mine, that judge writes another one, always says, don't let the system make family decisions for you. Okay, so you guys, as the parents, need to work this out. Right? Because if I have to come up with it, I'm a stranger. So I'm just going to take the limited information I have and try to make a, uh, an educated guess, but, you know, I'm just going to be guessing. And then, of course, compromise, right? Can we all just get along? Okay, so, so compromise, and hopefully, you know, again, you won't have to go to court. You won't have to do those things. Those are the best solutions when we come up with it together, right? Okay, okay any questions? I got 10 minutes, nine. Go ahead. Um, I think that a lot of times, a lot of this, some of it anyway, can be uh, resolved if there's a relationship established at the time of the pregnancy. Oh, very good. <laughs> so she said if there's a relationship established at the time of the pregnancy. Perfect segue. I got my people over here from Every Parent Matters in Montgomery County. We are working on infant vitality, not infant mortality, infant vitality to try to establish that relationship with fathers while the mother's pregnant. So you're absolutely right. So are you over in Five Rivers. I got you. Go ahead. I, I, it's interesting. I, um, I had a group of men and women together, and we were talking about visitations and, and, and seeing a child and so forth and all that. And I said, well, listen, I got a real simple solution to how you can see your child every day, right? I said, marry the mother. <laughs> let, let me let, let me let, okay. Let me let me let you sink that let that sink in. Right. It looked they looked at me like many women, yeah. like I had two heads. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so we're going into this relationship of having a child, right. and the fact of marrying someone and being in the same house is not even come up in the conversation. Nope. That's sad. That's, that, that's, that's, who that's we're really, <laughs> really, really sad. On um, what she was saying about the um, establishment, well, the infant vitality. Yes. Okay. So no is that going to be determined by um, DNA? Whether they get to see? How is that going to be determined? Is it going to be DNA? Uh, that's going to say that this father is going to get to see this child? Well, You've been saying that this is baby daddy. But when you do the DNA, it's not baby daddy. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm the director of Father Services by Pathway to Hope, which is a pregnancy center. Mm -hmm. And so what we, when they come into our center, when they make that call to come in and say, I'm here to get an ultrasound, a pregnancy test, 
we asked them at that time, will the partner be coming with you? Mm -hmm. We established that relationship by asking that question. And if the partner's coming with them, then we uh, have opportunity to work with the dad. That's what I do, I work with the dad. But what I'm saying is, how do you know that's a dad? It, 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 okay, if, if you I don't. don't. If, they, if I don't know that's a dad, and there's a situation, there's a conflict, she said he may be the father, he may not be the father. Mm -hmm. That's something that I'm not going to get into because that's not something we do. We will refer them out uh, to another service that will be able to, uh, if that's a situation. But if they come in, in our door, they they are coming together. They're coming together. And if they're not together, if they have some issue, then we schedule them to come in separate. And then we will discuss how we're going to help them from that point. Sir, are you saying that you have the audacity to believe that all children have two parents? <laughs> <laughs> you need to sit back there with them. You, so, so you, 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 you blow my mind right now. Okay, so go ahead. I understand what you're saying, and I guess I'm playing devil, devil's advocate. I understand. Here. Okay, so my point okay. is um, when you say you're sending them off to somewhere else, but is this still going to require? for DNA to make that determination. Right. Are they going to do DNA to say, I am the father? Yeah, so that's, so again, I don't want to turn this into the child support uh, thing, but <laughs> there's three different ways to establish paternity. You can either be married, you can sign the affidavit, what they call on the street, what? Sign the birth certificate, okay? Or you can get a DNA test. So you can sign the affidavit as long as mom is down with it. And that, that also establishes paternity. So everybody does not have to get a DNA test, right. although I strongly advise it. Well, even, okay, I'm gonna leave that alone. No, no, go ahead. Because even so, you got marriages that were. Well, yeah, but I mean, that's, a, yeah, yeah, you're going down a hole. I mean, you, no, I, I got this you. is. I hear you, it's I hear you. It is. But again, I, I could also say to play devil's advocate too. If I'm raising the child, and I've heard, there's some of you in here that probably, I was talking to some people last night, said, he came into my life when I was four months old. That's my dad. Okay, right. so so again, the, as far as the actual legal, uh, who's the biological father, that may not be as relevant when we're talking about taking care of children and seeing children. It's really who's going to be there for for the for the children. Okay. Basically, what he what he's basically what he's saying is, fatherhood starts not not necessarily start when the baby's born. It starts when the baby's conceived. Right. And if you that's got the father involved, and the, the okay. reason that so, that's so important is we talk about infant mortality, especially among black babies, black babies. okay? And so the fact of the matter is, if a father's engaged right from, right from uh, the moment of conception, the baby has a lot better chance of living to be one year old. And the thing is, a lot of times what contributes to that is stress That's in black right. women. I can't imagine anything more stressful than somebody to know from the beginning, I got to raise, raise this child by myself. Right. So you can take that off the table by being involved right from the jump, reduces the stress, reduces outcomes on black babies and so forth and so on. Yeah. All right, thank you. Have you enjoyed your lunch? Yeah. Yeah.